Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the GSU book club. I'm Cheryl Johnson Ransaw, the director of employee development and wellness services known as EDWS and uh, joined by my colleague, Brian Smith. And today we are hosting our first book club in the new year. Uh, today's selection is The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times by Michelle Obama. This is your first time attending one of our book clubs. Certainly we do offer a special welcome. If you have attended before, we say welcome back and just wanted to a few housekeeping matters before we get started into today's discussion. This session is being recorded and will be made available after today for all attendees. There will be a follow up email with a short survey and we invite your feedback and certainly offer you the opportunity to, to view the, the recording again. We will invite everyone to use the chat box if you would like to make any comments, respond to any questions raised. This is considered an informal gathering and we will monitor the chat box uh, throughout the session today. If you have comments or questions or concerns, uh, please enter and send your, your comments to all panelists so that we are able to see uh, your comments and monitor throughout the session. Just a few book club rules that we like to highlight at every gathering. Um, certainly, again, we appreciate you attending the gathering and invite everyone to just uh, be an active listener. Uh, there's no pressure, certainly, to um, participate in terms of offering comments or questions, although we certainly do invite that at any time and and just want you to feel comfortable with wherever you are. And certainly if you've not had an opportunity to read the selected book, that's okay um, because we will offer information and a special video um, featuring today's author. We do ask that everyone focus on respectful and productive conversations. So certainly we have selected a lot of different books in the past, um, fiction and nonfiction. We encourage uh, conversations and, and respect all perspectives and differences and, and just invite anyone to feel comfortable with sharing and respecting others who share as well. And last, if you have any questions about our discussion um, and what's presented, we do invite you to, to ask for clarification. And if you um, have some concerns about any confusing or troubling statements, whatever the case may be, we just you know, offer you the opportunity at any time to feel free to, to let those concerns be known to us. So today our featured author is Michelle Obama, who um, certainly is a very well-known personality. And uh, I think it's fair to say um, in terms of most people being familiar with who she is, the former first lady of the United States um, during the period that her husband, the former president Barack Obama served from 2009 to 2017. She is an attorney and author and um, is the author of the New York Times bestselling book, Becoming, which was published, I think, back in 2018. And actually, our office hosted a book club in 2019 featuring that selection, um, Becoming. Um, and just want to pause here and ask if anybody's read that first book, Becoming. Certainly, we'd be interested to hear if you have comments about that as we move through today's session. So, 
So our focus today really is one of presenting from Michelle Obama's perspectives in terms of her objectives for writing this second book. Um, in the book, she offers stories and insightful reflections on change and challenge and power. Um, we will see in her video as she shares about um, her particular motivations for writing the book, particularly as it relates to this time period during uh, COVID and the pandemic era. And she is very focused on sharing her personal, what she refers to as her personal toolbox, and that involves habits and principles that she developed to successfully adapt to, to change and overcome various obstacles, um, which for her was that earned wisdom to help her continue the journey to become. And she talks a lot about um, certainly referencing her first book, Becoming, but also in that book, as well as in this second book, she recognizing recognizes that um, this is a journey for her and suggests that for all of us, life is a journey and it's not uh, a point of ever ending, it's just continuing in different stages. I see there is a comment. Um, someone has noted that um, they read the book Becoming um, and really enjoyed it. Thank you for that comment. So Michelle Obama is also encouraging us um, people to find strength and light within yourself. And she emphasizes the importance of practicing self love and how important that is for, for that to be considered a focus first. Um, and then building on that through relationships with others, certainly starting with family, friends, colleagues, community, um, building on many different levels, but a strong emphasis on the need to focus on self first. And last, uh, she suggests that consideration of different and more practical approaches to challenges and change. So obviously, as we recognize this time period in which the book is written and her references made to the pandemic in which all of us have certainly um, been affected by in our work life, um, and recognizing for most of us too, I think there's the tendency to to wonder and wish, you know, for when uh, challenges and changes um, and and trauma might end. When will this end? And she is suggesting that we might uh, focus less on asking that question because obviously a lot of what we've been facing um, you know, are are situations, stresses that we can't control, but that. There are other areas that we may focus on that we may certainly be more in control of changing and adapting. And so we'll touch on that um, in this discussion as well. Some of those questions that we might entertain. So who best can talk about this book than Michelle Obama? And we have um, selected a video um, that certainly we think is um, presenting in her own words what this book is about, what her journey is about. And we um, are privileged to offer this as an opportunity for all of us to hear more about um, the light we carry. Over the 58 years that I've lived, I can look back and I can say, uh, this is how I deal with fear. This is, these are the things I say to myself when I need to pick myself up. This is how I stay visible in a world that doesn't necessarily see a tall black woman. This is how uh, I stay armored up when I'm attacked. The book is that offering. 
And it isn't meant to be a how-to guide. It's really like becoming. It's a series of stories. And that's the only way I know how to be when I'm communicating with people is to be honest about myself first and try to stay vulnerable. And I think people learn not through edict, but through stories. After receiving critical acclaim for her best-selling memoir, Becoming, former First Lady Michelle Obama is opening up again in her new book, The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times. I started the process of this book at, at the, the early months of COVID and quarantine. We had just finished the Becoming tour in that time period, had come off of a 35 cent arena tour with people hugging and the environment and energy was profound and we were sharing and then it felt like the lights went out and our world shut down and we were all at home watching essentially what felt like our country and our world unraveling the death tolls mounting you know violence the insurrection um, uh, health care system crushed all of it um, and like a lot of people that that time alone in isolation I found my head spinning you know I found myself struggling to stay hopeful um, and in the same time I was getting a lot of letters from people around the country I was talking to my own girls my own friends and I wasn't alone everybody was searching for some answers of how to cope and for some reason, they were asking me, <laughs> what do you do? Um, and I had to start thinking about that. What, what do I do? How, how do I manage? What am I doing right now? So the book is, is the result of me kind of unwinding some of that for myself so that I could be of aid in some way to others. Um, and what I found in that, that process was that I had to start with me. I had, I had to find my own light in order to share it. And that's where the title of the book comes from because we all have that light. We all have things in our lives that either fuel our flame or it snuffs it out. These days I try to practice being kind. Um, I, I, I try it because it is a practice, um, especially as women. There are societal signals all around us telling us that there's something wrong with some part of us. Um, we're supposed to age gracefully. We're supposed to look, be the same shape that we were when we were in our 20s after, you know, giving birth to two, three kids, um, that we're not supposed to go gray, that we're, our face isn't supposed to wrinkle. I mean, it's not in our heads. These messages are coming in. They've been coming in our whole lives. So the notion that we aren't affected by it, you know, and that I am not affected by it, that's laughable. I absolutely am. But I thought about what are the messages that I'm giving myself every day? And how do I reverse that trend? How do I light up for myself first? So today, when I'm looking at the mirror, I, I still see what's wrong, but I try to push those thoughts out and say, wow, you are healthy. Look at your skin. Look how happy you look, your smile. I try to find the things about me that I love and start my day a little more kind. I get so many affirmations from my husband on a daily basis. You were beautiful, you were great, you were smart, but sometimes you block those out, right? I mean, that's the battle, that I am living with a man who loves me dearly, who thinks that the sun rises and sets, and he is clear and vocal about that. And I get that affirmation every day, but I have to be honest that sometimes that isn't enough because in the end, the messages have to come from me. I have to believe it myself. Uh, and even when the person that I love tells me the opposite, it's still, it's the work I have to do inside. And that's one of my major messages to young people. You gotta do that work on your own. You gotta love yourself. You gotta practice that before you can expect other, for you to believe it in other people when they tell you. He was the first person to read the book. He was the first person that I talked through the concept with. The beauty of Barack Obama is that he 
he know he understands the world of women because he was raised by his grandmother, his mother, his sisters around him. He's somebody that I can always go to um, about these things. He he knows that I've got the negative impulses that I'm hard on myself. Um, that you know, I, that, that my first impulse is to hold back and to resist change. I shared the story that the one of the most scary things that I had to confront was his decision to run for the presidency. And he put it kind of on my lap. You know, he said, look, if you can't handle this, if you don't want to do it, I'm out. So it's kind of up to you. And I had to think about that. I had to think of why my instinct was so automatically no. And that's when I had to confront that fearful mind and to realize that that's the part of me and so many of us have it that don't want change. We don't like new. We don't want discomfort. But here's the thing about pushing beyond that um, that I talk about in the book is that if you can push past those moments of fear, that's where growth happens. That's where possibility lies. Yes, Michelle Obama struggles with fear struggled with fear, continues to do it. I mean, writing this book, putting my thoughts out into the world, I said that with Becoming, it's the same way. At the beginning of this process, when, you are, when you've sat with something and you're putting your most vulnerable thoughts on paper and it is printed and it's about to go on bookshelves, my first reaction is, why did you do this? You, why are you putting yourself through this? You, people are gonna judge it. They're gonna maybe not like it. They're not gonna, th those messages are going through my mind as we speak, but over the years I've learned to let them come in. <laughs> They're there for a reason, but don't let them stop me. Um, but that takes practice. While Michelle Obama offers reflections on change in the book, the mother of two is also sharing updates about her life and family now. For starters, as empty nesters, she and the former president are thrilled that daughters Malia and Sasha have chosen to be roommates. You try not to react too much because it's like, you don't wanna go, oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you. Because then they think, well, maybe this is not a good thing if my mom likes it. So I just, you know, said, okay. Well, that's interesting that you guys are going to try living together. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, it feels it feels good to know that the two girls you raised find solace in a kitchen table with one another. You know, it's like the, the one thing you want for them, you know, and I think that they realize that they have a unique bond because they're the only two who know what they just went through, how they, you know, growing up in the White House, in the same household uh, with the uh, brightest spotlight on the world on you as you were going through adolescence and puberty, they uniquely know what that means for them. And I think they become even closer now that they're out on the other side. But yeah, it makes me feel really, really good. Um, not just that they're, they're living together, but they're thriving together and they're thriving on their own. Um, as individual young women. I write about this, the girls are out, and so you have these weird panic thoughts that your girls are out in the world, living in this messy world, and so you think about crazy things you wanna make sure you remember to tell them. It's like, remember to don't walk alone at night, you know? Barack sent them an email about earthquake preparedness you know, because they were living in California. So as parents, you read studies and you see something that scares you, you send it to the girls. Make sure, did you know about this? He does, he's he's a big article sender. Um, <laughs> and we all just read it and laugh. And now Sasha's starting to share some articles because she's a psychology major and I think she's slowly psychoanalyzing us. So some of the articles are specific to our, what she thinks are our individual neuroses. Um, so I still fantasize for a life of balance where I'm still doing meaningful work, but I'm still getting meaningful time to invest in myself. The ability to learn new things on my own, whether it's knitting or swimming laps or, you know, something that keeps the flame in my heart and my soul burning. I haven't been able to knit because I've been 
you know, finishing and promoting this book. Um, but I like to repeat patterns because that's how you get better at them. Um, so the fact that I could master making an entire crew neck sweater, to me, I was amazed at myself and that it fit my husband and looked really good. I don't want to be a master knitter. I like the fact that I can produce some things, you know, and there's this great cable pattern scarf. I see now I'm kind of going in and sounding a little knit crazy, but it's a really pretty pattern with a raised cable knit. I love making that scarf because it looks like you put in hours and it's just a matter of twisting some uh, knots and knitting them off of a needle. It's simple to do, but it looks like, it looks like you're the best knitter, knitter on the planet. TV is an escape for me. That HGTV, it's not all lowbrow. I love the dating shows, Married at First Sight. Oh I, my God. Yeah, I can, I can do it all. I am still physically active and my goal now, instead of having Michelle Obama arms, I just wanna keep moving. Just keep moving. If I can walk, move, I don't have to run, I don't have to beat everyone. So I've had to change the way I see myself in, the, in, in, in my health space. I never used to weigh myself. I'm not trying to stick to numbers, but when you're in menopause, you have this slow creep. But I think for the most part, I count myself blessed. I think I will continue to search for ways to use whatever platform I have because that is evolving too. Um, and I'm, I'm glad about that. I mean, I don't have the platform that I had as former first lady, but we all have a platform and I'm gonna figure out whatever my platform looks like today, tomorrow, in 10 years, what can I do to help somebody else? And that's gonna change given the needs of the country, the power and influence that I either have or don't have. Um, whether it's big or small, um, I'm gonna be constantly looking for ways to help. All right, just uh, wondering if anyone has any thoughts or reactions to the video. Um, Again, to hear Michelle Obama talk about her book, her life, uh, her her own challenges, and her words of inspiration to others. I think it's pretty powerful. And um, certainly, if you haven't read the book, um, this opportunity to hear in her own words uh, gives you a sense of truly what the book is all about, and, and you may want to check it out uh, after today. So as we heard in the video, um, Michelle Obama did talk about um, some of her ways of coping uh, and managing the life stressors and change and challenges and, uh, and this Quote from her from the book, she says, sometimes it turns out the smallest of tools can help us to sort through the largest of feelings. And knitting has helped show me how to settle an anxious mind. So uh, as she indicated in the video, she really has taken knitting pretty seriously to a whole new level, as they say, in terms of just a, an outlet for her, uh, something therapeutic um for coping um so here we'd like to just pause and and ask uh, our audience to to think about you know what are some coping skills or tools that you use to help manage anxiety change and stress does anybody do any knitting or Needlepoint uh, or the arts and crafts, only that's that category of uh, an outlet or activity. So we have one comment someone shared reading as an outlet. Absolutely. Thank you. Another comment taking walks while the music. It's a great combination to 
to get in some physical activity as well as a, a way to just kind of re help relax even more if you enjoyed listening to, to music. Another comment someone enjoys walking early morning. So it's definitely important for all of us to realize that, you know, one size doesn't fit all, that everybody has different interests, different life style patterns and responsibilities and just uh, looking at day-to-day -day scheduling. Um, you know, time of day is, is critical in terms of how you plan, what you plan and, and for some people, as in this comment, you know, early morning walk, that's great if you have an opportunity to, to take that in um, as a start of the day. Um, and, and certainly that's something walking particularly that you can do other times of day. Um, and that, that accomplishes quite a bit in terms of physical and emotional and mental health, um, the walking aspect. These are some great comments. Any other comments? Just keep them coming. Certainly. As we also want to consider you know, what might be some barriers or challenges that can make it difficult to, to manage anxiety, change and stress. What sometimes gets in the way and it may not be as easy as we would like in terms of coping. Going to our toolbox uh, to see what might help to manage change and anxiety and stress. Anybody like to share some, some barriers or challenges that might happen in life? See one comment, um, lack of time, absolutely. Thank you for that comment. Certainly time is a critical factor. Timing is a critical factor in terms of stress management uh, in general, um, time management. And as we recognize, even when we talk about, uh, like in this book, the period of time that Michelle Obama focuses on is this pandemic and we're in this new pandemic era. And obviously, um, you know, we've been hit with that as a major life stressor affecting everyone that has certainly impacted how we carry out our lives and how we manage time in different ways. But for different people, they're different experiences that we also respect that and and there are other life stressors that play a part as well in terms of what may get in the way what make it what might make it even more challenging uh, yes another comment is in our responsibilities so absolutely it's important to to recognize that you know when dealing with the pressures of multiple responsibilities personal professional responsibilities, those certainly play a part in terms of how difficult it might be to manage life, to manage the, the emotions and changes and stressors. And with that being said too, there's certainly the, the point of just mentioning that you know, things change from day to day, even sometimes the best plans that are made, it, considering uh, a schedule, a routine in terms of planning and timing, um, recognizing priorities that are needed, but also looking at what outlets and activities you might factor in. We know that that can change um, in a day that can change in a week and a month. And so that can certainly make it frustrating at times when we're trying to do our best to, to, to manage in a healthy way, um, but know that 
sometimes it just doesn't always work out and yet instead of giving up we need to be encouraged and that's where it's important to to think about support systems and you know who is helping who is encouraging so that we continue the journey as well in terms of um, becoming and, and living life in the best way possible and looking at what we need to put in our toolbox as we go through the journey um, to, to draw from in different times of change and challenge. Then the, the book, Michelle also um, talks about um, how we need to, to look at perhaps shifting our way of thinking and approaching change and challenge. And uh, to reference her quote from the book, as we continue to navigate pandemic challenges, reckon with issues of injustice and instability and worry over an uncertain future, Start considering a different, more practical set of questions about staying upright inside of challenge and change. I would like to have the conversation and she really talks about and writes about how important it is um, to try to have conversations with others that um, her book is even written in a style um, that's pretty easy to read and um, and to reflect and consider um, starting with self um, asking certain questions but but perhaps connecting with others to to begin to have dialogue and conversations so some of the questions that she referenced um, start with you know how do we adapt obviously there are a lot of different levels that we're Addressing when we talk about dealing with uncertain times and change and challenges, but again, just starting with self and considering others. How do we get more comfortable, less paralyzed inside of uncertainty? And um, I hope that you may give these some thoughts. If you have comments, if you have thoughts you'd like to share, we invite those. On any of these questions or others that you may have that come to mind. What tools do we have to sustain ourselves? So again, as Michelle talks about her personal toolbox, and she's really encouraging that everybody consider having one, making one, building and building on a toolbox. Um, Definitely, when we talk about coping and managing and learning how to not just survive, but to thrive, um, it's important to consider what, what do we need to do? What, how is that going to happen? So, if you have thoughts on that, anything that you are doing or know that others are doing or what you'd like to do, please feel free to share. And then the last question here is just one of considering, you know, as we obviously do need to ourself, self-care is critical. It needs to start there. And, and for some, there's a question of that being a selfish perspective, but that's okay when we're talking about trying to learn how best to cope and manage in healthy ways, it should start there. And then from there, look at building on how that might affect others, how we might work together in different relationships to overcome together that we, depending on certainly what we're dealing with on different levels, from small to big, um, it, it is important to consider how we might overcome together. So I see one comment um, 
in the chat box um, mentioning a reference to what Michelle Obama talked about in terms of just learning how to push past your fears. And truly that that's a major one because that really, uh, when we talk about reactions and responses to change and challenges and trauma and stressors that a lot of times, particularly around change, we 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 do develop fears. It, it's natural to to be experiencing some fear because when things are happening, like a pandemic, I mean, how scary has that been for? I think it's fair to say everybody. Uh, again, perhaps affected in different ways, but you know, that's a natural emotion, one that first it should be acknowledged and validated and 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 then learning how to to like the comment push past, push through like Michelle talked about, uh, you know, trying to figure out the best way to to cope and and with that sometimes it really is about recognizing what are the positives. So even through the storm of life, the storm of a pandemic and the fears of, you know, the unknown of how things might play out. And uh, each day when we have an opportunity to try to push past those fears and look at what we may do in terms of coping and managing day to day, just to, to practice Gratitude and positivity is certainly what we talk about in our wellness programming. How important it is to try to start that day each day on a positive note and build on that um, in spite of what other challenges you may be facing. So the last quote we'd like to just reference is uh, one that really sums up and obviously refers back to the, the title of this book selection. Uh, Michelle wrote, one light feeds another, one strong family lends strength to more, one engaged community can ignite those around it. This is the power of the light we carry. like to just ask you to think about what that might mean to you. What's your takeaway from that? What are your thoughts? Um, what would you like to share in terms of your reflections, your reactions? And I think here is certainly a quote that sums up really nicely what the book is is all about. Um, as we heard in the video, uh, Michelle talked about some of the the motivations that led to her writing the book, including the fact that she said people were asking, looking to her uh, for answers and. Um, we're offering ways to, to try to cope and you know, to hear about not only her own personal experiences, but just for support. And um, as she acknowledged to her own struggles um, on a personal, professional level, um, she certainly felt a responsibility. And, and as she referenced, just in her journey of becoming, uh, that has been something that she has 
definitely experienced in terms of a responsibility um, to give back, to help others. Um, and so I think the essence of what she's suggesting here is one of a focus for all of us to consider first, starting with self, because as Michelle talked about, she struggles too. And that's something that she's been very transparent and forthcoming and sharing. Um, and that, you know, as she has certainly gained more clarity and insight and, and learned how to, to fill her toolbox with um, ways of coping and managing that, you know, she uh, wants to share that, to share the, the positives, the successes, and, and that that's something too that we're encouraged to consider that the power first starts within self, within us individually and how we might take that and build on that to help strengthen within our family system, within our community and beyond. Um, I see a comment in the chat box someone mentioned that you're not living for yourself by yourself is is a great interpretation of this quote. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that's important to consider as we go about our day to day lives that that although sometimes we may feel alone and isolated, and certainly we've we've been forced in the pandemic um, in the worst times of having to isolate and quarantine. I mean, literally uh, and figuratively that. Um, there's still, though, in the worst of times, the need to try to connect and allow others to help and to help others, even as we struggle with our own struggles. So thank you for that comment and certainly as others may consider um, as you reflect. We definitely hope that this has been good discussion, good topic for reflection. And again, if you've not read the book, um, you might consider picking it up. I'm still reading it, I'll admit. Um, but even some passages that have been read, I find myself going back to to read again. So um, I've certainly found it to be pretty powerful and encouraging. And um, we hope it has been meaningful for you as well. If you have other thoughts or um, feedback that you'd like to share, we certainly uh, invite that. As I mentioned, um, you will be receiving a follow-up email uh, with a brief survey um, that we ask for your feedback. We are always inviting feedback on suggestions for other book selections. So, you know, plans are for us to continue hosting the book club in this new year. Um, we have not made a selection for the next book club, so you may um, want to consider if you have Thoughts of suggesting any titles will be happy to receive those um, and invite you to either respond to the email that you'll receive with the survey or at any time if you have um, information you'd like to pass on to us or you have questions certainly about our services um, just to reference um, in terms of resources and programming. Um, I will go through the, the all the specifics on this list, but just um, starting with our office, certainly we invite you to um, either give us a call or email or um, visit our website if you want information about uh, our services, about the calendar of offerings. We have a, a variety of different offerings that um, we encourage people to 
consider taking advantage of when you do have time. And we have certainly focused on offering virtual events, particularly having made the shift in this pandemic era. So just bear that in mind as well. A couple of the services provided include health coaching. So if you're interested in some individual consultations um, to kind of process and talk about goal setting, you're encouraged to give us, uh, get in touch with us uh, via email. And we have faculty and staff assistance, the internal EAP that you're um, wanting a consultation about just dealing with uh, stress management uh, for personal and or work related matters that you have this as a resource uh, through our office um, at no cost. So we invite you to email or give us a call if you're interested. And last, we do want to refer to a resource through the University System of Georgia, KeyPro, the external employee assistance program that offers um, consultations, short-term counseling, work-life resources as well. Um, and we invite you to uh, give them a call at the toll-free number for more information to access those services that are available. So here we're going to pause, and if there are any questions before we wrap up today's book club, um, we invite you to feel free to, to enter in the chat box. And again, if you have questions or comments later, we invite those to follow. Um, if you want to send an email or give us a call, we want to thank you again, all of you, for attending today's book club. And we will just end on the note to encourage that everyone take good care and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>